Have you ever wondered why your grandparents, parents, and you seem to view the world so differently? It's a question that's puzzled many of us. Why is it that each generation appears to have its own unique perspective, its own distinct values and attitudes? Could it be that our experiences shape us, molding our views and beliefs, or is it possible that our perceptions are influenced by the era we grow up in, the events that unfold around us, the societal norms of our time? These are intriguing questions to ponder, aren't they? And they lead us to another thought-provoking question. Is there a pattern to these generational differences? Could it be that these shifts in perspectives, attitudes, and values follow a certain rhythm? A cycle, perhaps? If so, could we predict what the next generation might be like based on this pattern? Well, the Strauss-Howe generational theory might have some answers for you. The Strauss-Howe generational theory, in essence, is a cycle, a rhythm of history. It's a compelling idea that history isn't just a linear progression of events, but rather, it unfolds in recurring cycles, much like the seasons of a year. This theory, proposed by historians William Strauss and Neil Howe, suggests that society goes through a repetitive cycle of four stages, or turnings, each of which lasts about 20 to 22 years, roughly the span of a generation. This cycle of turnings is not just a novel idea, it's a lens through which we can view and interpret the ebb and flow of societal mood, events, and collective behavior. The first turning is a high, a period of societal unity and strong institutions. It's a time of prosperity but also conformity, as the society seeks to consolidate the gains made in the previous cycle. Next comes the awakening, a time when the societal focus shifts from the external to the internal, from institutions to the individual. During this turning, society experiences a spiritual or moral awakening, often led by the younger generation. The third turning, the unraveling, is a time of growing societal discord and weakening institutions. It's a time when individualism is at its peak, but it often leads to a fraying of the social fabric. Finally, we come to the crisis, when society faces a major threat that it must overcome. This is a time of upheaval and transformation as society rebuilds its institutions and redefines its values. And then, the cycle begins anew, with a new high. Each stage of this cycle, each turning, brings forth a new generation with a distinct collective persona, shaped by the societal mood and events of their formative years. The Strauss-Howe theory is a fascinating framework, not just for understanding the past, but also for anticipating the future. As we navigate through our current turning, we can look to this theory for insights and guidance. Each turning represents a new generation with a distinct collective persona. The Strauss-Howe generational theory thus provides a rhythmic, cyclical perspective to our understanding of history, society, and ourselves. The four turnings, each with its characteristics, define the rhythm of history according to the Strauss-Howe generational theory. Let's dive deeper into each of these turnings. First, we have the high. This is a period of institutional strength and individual weakness where society is confident about where it wants to go collectively, even if many feel stifled individually. It's a time of great communal harmony, but also of individual repression. The generation that comes of age during this turning, known as the artist generation, is overprotected and tends to be conformist. Next, we have the awakening. This is an era when institutions are attacked in the name of personal and spiritual autonomy. Just when society is reaching its high tide of public progress, people suddenly tire of social discipline and want to recapture a sense of personal authenticity. Young activists and spiritualists look back at the previous high as an era of cultural and spiritual poverty. The prophet generation comes of age during this turning. They are passionate and principled, often the champions of social justice and reform. The third turning is the unraveling. This is a time when institutions are weak and distrusted, while individualism is strong and flourishing. The mood of this era is in many ways the opposite of a high. Institutions are discredited, and the focus is on self-reliance and personal growth. The nomad generation comes of age during this turning. These are practical, hard-nosed, man-for-himself individuals. Finally, we have the crisis. This is an era of destruction, often involving war or revolution, after which societal structures are revitalized. The crisis is a time when society's survival is in question, and the answers are not clear. Out of the crisis, a new societal order will emerge, and a new high will begin. The hero generation comes of age during this turning. These are team-oriented young optimists who come out into a world in crisis, and must act decisively to save society. 
These four turnings make up a full cycle, or seculum, which lasts roughly the length of a long human life. The high is followed by an awakening which gives way to an unraveling and then a crisis. After the crisis a new high begins and the cycle repeats. Each turning is shaped by the generation that comes of age during it, their hopes, dreams and actions shape the world they will leave to the next generation. In this cycle of turnings, each generation experiences the four stages of life, childhood, young adulthood, midlife, and old age, in a different social mood, which shapes their outlook and attitudes. This is the essence of the Strauss-Howe generational theory, a theory that tells us that history is not random, but rather follows a predictable cyclical pattern. And so the cycle continues with each generation shaped by the turning they grow up in. Just as there are four turnings, there are also four generational archetypes in the Strauss-Howe theory. Now wouldn't it be intriguing if we could categorize generations into four distinct archetypes? Well that's exactly what this theory does. These archetypes are prophet, nomad, hero, and artist. Each of these archetypes holds unique characteristics and corresponds to one of the four turnings. Let's start with the prophets. This archetype is born during a high, a period of optimism and strong institutions. Prophets are often value-driven, focused on morals and principles. They grow up to become passionate leaders, initiating change and challenging the status quo. Think of the baby boomers who were born during the post-World War II prosperity, and later became the driving force of the cultural and political changes of the 60s and 70s. Moving on, we have the nomads. Born during an awakening, a time of social and spiritual upheaval, nomads are pragmatic and independent. They are the survivors who grow up to become resilient, practical problem solvers. The Generation X, born during the social revolutions of the late 20th century, exemplifies this archetype. Next, we have the heroes born during an unraveling, a time of cynicism and distrust in institutions. They are civic-minded and optimistic, often growing up to become cooperative leaders, rebuilding institutions and restoring societal trust. The millennials, born during the late 20th and early 21st century, embody this archetype. Finally, we come to the artists. Born during a crisis, a time of upheaval and transformation, artists are adaptive and sensitive. They often grow up to become empathetic peacemakers, mediating conflicts and healing societal wounds. The silent generation, born during the Great Depression and World War II, represents this archetype. These archetypes, repeating in a fixed order, create a predictable generational pattern. As each generation passes, the next steps into its shoes, continuing the cycle of history in an endlessly fascinating dance of societal evolution. So, how does the Strauss-Howe generational theory apply to you and the world around you? Well, let's dive in. The beauty of the Strauss-Howe generational theory lies in its practical applications. It's not just about understanding the past, but also about predicting the future, forecasting social trends, and bridging the gap between generations. The theory suggests that society moves in cycles, or turnings, each lasting around 20 years. Each turning shapes a generation's outlook and behavior, thereby influencing society's overall direction. This cyclical nature of history allows us to predict social trends with surprising accuracy. Take the millennial generation, for example. Born during the third turning, a time of individualism and skepticism, they were raised to believe they could change the world. And as they've matured, they've proven to be a powerful force for social change, championing causes like climate change and social justice. Now let's consider the intergenerational dynamics. Each generation tends to react to the perceived failures of the previous one, leading to a pendulum swing in societal attitudes. For instance, the baby boomers, born during the second turning, a time of optimism and collectivism, reacted against the conformism of their silent generation parents, leading to a more individualistic society. But the pendulum swings both ways. The millennials, seeing the drawbacks of extreme individualism, are pushing back towards a more community-focused society. Understanding this dynamic can help us navigate the complexities of intergenerational relationships whether in the workplace, politics, or our personal lives. Applying the Strauss-Howe generational theory isn't about putting people in boxes based on their birth year, but rather about understanding the societal forces that shape us. It's a tool we can use to foster empathy and understanding, to bridge the gap between generations, and to make informed predictions about the future. Thus, the Strauss-Howe generational theory offers a fascinating lens through which to view the world and perhaps understand why we see things so differently from our parents or grandparents. 
If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.